Hello everyone, thanks for pressing play. In this episode of Excalibur CCG TV, we're taking a look at the top comics coming out for May 22nd, 2013. Keep it rolling. Hello again everyone, thanks for pressing play. Thanks for watching our videos, we really appreciate it. We're taking a look at the top comics coming out this week. But first, a quick word, we, we want to we just want to let people know that our thoughts and prayers are with the people in Oklahoma City and the tornado that's came through and devastated them, devastated their lives. If you know someone, friends or family that have been affected by this, they're in our thoughts and our prayers, and we wish them all the best. Moving on into comics, though, for this week, we're going to change it up a little bit and talk about the top stuff coming out. He's Randy, I'm Chris, and here we go. What have you got first on the list here, Randy? First up, Akinero, number one, comes out from Dark Horse Comics. Dark Horse Comics. That's right. This is a reimagining of Red Riding Hood that has, um, it's in, I guess, feudal Japan. It's going to, it's based off of a, a video game that's going to be coming out here. So okay. People love the video game comics, uh, Mass Effect, uh, Injustice, different things like that. So they're going to uh, want to pick this up. Supplies are limited on this one, so, you know, we'll have to throw it down in the middle of the floor here and see who wants to fight over the last copy. <laughs> It'll be gone. It'll be gone. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, for me, uh, one I'm looking forward to is Batman Incorporated hitting the shelves this week, uh, number 11. That's right. Still continuing. Batman still dealing with the death of Damian Wayne. Still continuing that, that story and the emotional context of it all and everything, so I'm looking forward to that. Right. You see that uh, Talia has also been dealing with it as well. Thing, uh, that was obviously not what she intended to have happen there. And... Uh, Batman, I don't think cares. He's he's one to uh, put the world to hurt on her right now. I think with this, so uh, we might get to see some revenge here, uh, starting with this issue, probably culminating in the next couple of issues. But it'll be a uh, it'll be a slobber knocker there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And also for those of you that are getting Batman Incorporated, we've only got 11, 12, and 13. That's right. Yeah, that's when they're going to wrap up the series with issue 13. You've got that with Grant Morrison. Oh, you, that's right. You've got some special coming out as well. They'll be looking at all the different characters. I don't know if it's what they're doing afterwards or what, but uh, you'll have that. But Grant Morrison won't be the writer on that. I can't imagine Batman Incorporated with Adam at this point, but we'll, we'll see. see. What else is on the list for you this week, Randy? I have Daredevil number 26 coming out. This book has been incredible. I think it kind of hit its stride about issue 16 or 17 and he's been going strong since then with with really uh, uncharted waters there uh, but what they're giving us now is an opponent that has all of daredevil's ability but he can see so you know now you've got someone that can match daredevil toe to toe but has his sight so now he's got one up on daredevil what's going to happen after that now, plus, we're still dealing with um, Foggy and his uh, bout with cancer here. How serious is it going to get? So, uh, Mark Waite just killing it with an awesome story. So, do you think that Daredevil would benefit by being having his mind taken over by someone else and becoming a superior Daredevil? <laughs> just uh, kidding, folks. Just taking kidding. It, taken over by Bullseye? No! There what if? Go. That would be wicked awesome. I guess. I'd check it out. I <laughs> hey, would check, it, check out. it out. <laughs> what, what's next? Next up, uh, we have to give a shout out here for Deadpool number 10. We've got uh, had a couple of people here asking us to, to review more on Deadpool. Uh, we have the 10th issue coming out. Uh, this one looks like it's going to be a, a real superior kind of issue uh, this, this week uh, featuring the superior Spider-Man. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this this is uh, Brian Fussain writing it. He's, he's got his uh, partner there. Uh, people don't care about the partner; they care about it. it's Brian Fussain writing it. There. And, uh, <laughs> they love they love the humor. They want to see more of it. Uh, and you know, it, it seems to fit Daredevil. Or I'm sorry, Deadpool perfectly. Cool, very so, cool. Uh, check it out, people. Check, check it out, folks. It out. Uh, another one I'm looking forward to this week is uh, Talon uh, from DC Comics. Mm -hmm. To me, Talon has been uh, not every issue is 10 out of 10, but it is, it, to me, it's a consistently good read. Maybe, maybe even I would even compare it along the lines of Daredevil. It's just a consistently good read for me. Uh, so I'm really digging what uh, uh, now it's James Tenyon is on is writing this character. 
uh, some more of the Batman rogues gallery, I guess you could say, has entered into the fray with uh, Talon having to deal with that. And I love, I just love the the history uh, that that they're exploring with the character and the organization of the Court of Owls and and the Owls in general and how that all ties in. I'm really digging it. Mm -hmm. uh, the art's been great, story, the writing's been great, so I'm looking forward to this next issue hitting the shelves this week. Okay, and that's going to, uh, I think, be crossing over soon with Birds of Prey, if I'm not mistaken. I so. think so. I'd have, I'd have to double check, but I think so. So That's yeah. cool, because the birds have a talent in their rank now as well, a female talent. So That's right. Uh, they they love the the Court of Owl characters there, and they're trying to to work them into the DC universe as much as possible. Yeah, so that's a good thing. Very cool. Uh, I've got a couple here. Uh, Fearless Defenders, four, four. This is an AU issue, okay. and we've got Uncanny Avengers number eight, which is an AU issue. Okay. So we've got two more that are going to be tied into the Age of Ultron this week. Uh, the, the, I can see how the Uncanny Avengers is going to be tying in, seeing as how the Avengers are in the thick of everything right there. Um, the other one seems to deal more with uh, Doombot, and uh, maybe that's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure the, you know, the Fearless Defenders have not had a whole lot of a, a role in the Age of Ultron yet. So, uh, and by this point in time, they're not really giving us books where they're backtracking and showing us uh, characters as they entered into it. They're already in the thick of Age of Ultron, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see, you know, what uh, Misty Knight and Valkyrie and all this crew have been, you know, what's going on with them with the Age of Ultron. That's a real good point because I just now I just thought of that. I was like, I haven't seen in Valkyrie, I haven't seen any of them in, a, in the Age of Ultron series. Especially with uh, how big of a role Valkyrie kind of started to play with uh, Bendis and his uh, Avengers there, Secret Avengers, so uh, it'll be interesting to see her kind of step back into the, the picture with that, but uh, so those, those are another uh, couple there for me. So we got the two AU issues, but no Age of Ultron no, issue this week. Nope, no Age of Ultron exactly. this week. There's, right. there's a little bit of a break there. And we got we only got two more issues to go. Two big issues. Nine and ten. That's right. So maybe Valkyrie will swoop in there in issue ten and, and deliver us uh, Angela. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe. <laughs> why not? We'll see. Why not, huh? Tell me what else you have coming out here. Another one I'm really excited about is Bounce. Number one from Image Comics. Joe Casey, David Messina. I got to check out some preview pages online mm -hmm. uh, on CBR. And uh, the, the, the art looks great. I'm, I'm, I'm digging. I, I dug those preview pages, and now, now I want the issue in my hand. I, uh, just even those preview pages I saw, his uh, powers kind of reminded me of Speedball, but I'm not going to uh. say it's exactly like that. With Joe Casey, it's not going to be exactly like that. It's right. gonna, there's going to be something going on with it. But it's a young guy, a guy, a young guy that's Slacker a hero. Speedball. He doesn't mind, you know, <laughs> chilling out and token on whatever he's token on or whatever <laughs> but the art looks really great uh this david messina has been has been around for he's currently doing the ultimate comics wolverine miniseries right. but this art even on bounce that i saw for bounce number one looked even better than that oh, cool. so as i've said before i'm kind of an art guy uh so i'm really looking forward to that and just the whole slant that joe casey will bring uh to a superhero character of his own has me intrigued mm -hmm. so definitely on my list this week yeah I'm picking that one up as well exactly um, I've got another uh, number one coming out this week with uh, green team number one right now we had the movement uh, come out a couple of weeks ago and movement was uh, taking a look at these young superheroes that were going to step up and uh, you know take the world by storm here so to speak and uh, you know in a, a city where everything's kind of corrupt uh, and now you've got the other side of it where you're going to have these teams that buy their power. So, you know, are they going to have the same ideals? Are they going to, you know, have the same sense of responsibility that these other uh, the movement seems to have? Or is it going to be, um, you know, party now because I have the, you know, these, these awesome powers? Right. It'll be an interesting one to see. That's uh, that's going to be a pretty big title uh, there this week. So very cool, very cool. Uh, for me, let's see what else I got coming out here this week. Uh, 
Superior Spider-Man number 10. That's right. I finally caught up and read issue number 9. Awesome. Yes! Awesome. I yes! loved it. There, there's, there's going to be one or two of you I know who are going to say, oh, how can you say you loved it? It's different. You know, yes. He, it, it would be such a cop-out if you had um, Octavius living Spider-Man's life, Peter Parker's life, so effectively, and then, you know, he can't handle up on uh, Peter Parker's mind or something like that. So I, I, I like that they're going to continue this. I, I should probably say spoiler there, but... Oh, yeah, spoiler. But... But even still, I love it. I want more Doc Ock as Spider-Man. Yeah, definitely. He's already proven in such a short amount of time how much better he is at doing it. It's it's great. It's a great, to me, it's a great twist. I, up until, I don't know, I've been back and forth with the series, but I've been constantly been intrigued. Mm -hmm. So constantly getting it and reading it because I want to know what they're going to do next, what they're going to do next. And with this, with issue number nine that came out, the struggle for not just the body, but the mind uh, Peter Parker now has been taken over. Yeah, that was such a creepy ending to that issue nine there that uh, I'll be interested to see how it picks up here. Is he going to try to play the part a little more after his run in with the Avengers and almost getting caught with all this or is he going to just be full on Octavius there? Yeah. Uh, one we'll see with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested as long as he I don't know. I, I, for me, for now, I, I'm interested as long as he does Spider-Man, but better. Right. I don't want. I really don't want him becoming Spider Octopus. I mean, I, I want. Right. I, I want him Spider-Man, but better. Oh, then uh, you don't want to see one of the upcoming covers. I saw have. the upcoming cover, <laughs> and, and, and to me, it, it does make some sense. But I, I still want. I still want him to. I still want him to be a better Spider-Man. I don't right. want him to be a knockoff of Doctor Octopus. Right. I think it's also worth pointing out that that this is a great, I guess, marketing uh, plan here for Marvel with this this different Spider-Man, and they see they see it as being a, a, a sellable enough title or, or concept that they're now giving them two or three more. Or, you know, they're giving him a month. They're giving him the, the team-up series with Superior yeah. Spider-Man. They're, they're giving him the, the foes there. It'll be interesting to see if the foes react differently to him, you know, because he, he's more hardcore with his, you know, uh, justice he dishes out yeah. there. Uh, but they Marvel obviously sees that there's a lot of potential in this story and, and that if we were to have ended it right now, we would have ended it way too soon. I agree. I agree. So that's really cool. Check out Superior Spider-Man if you are not already. Finally, 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 we have the wrap-up, the conclusion to the wrath of the First Lantern. Pick up that big boy there. This is a massive book. This is Green Lantern number 20 that's coming out. We also have the New Guardians coming out and Red Lantern coming out. They're all wrapping it up. This is all uh, going to be the final issue for these creative teams and we get a fresh new start in um, June. So this book here is going to be the big one. What happens? What changes? Are the Guardians still going to be in place there? You know. Uh, is Simon Baz still going to be a guardian? You know, they uh, everything I've seen, they've been mentioning all these other ones, but they haven't uh, within the the new solicitations. But they haven't mentioned Baz, although I'm still seeing Baz with the Justice League of America. So right. I'll, I'll be interested to see. There's something special about this guy here, and I'll be interested to see, you know, what more they reveal on him in this oversized uh, book that we have here. It, it's big. Yep. It's a big book. Dedicate a couple of uh, minutes there to read that one. <laughs> uh, here, here's the other thing that's awesome about this. Ah, it's uh, Jeff Johns and Doug Monkey. But then when we turn it over, it's a whole slew of tons of other writer, er, artists that are joining on board here. So it's not all just Monkey's artwork on this. Uh, you've got you've got uh, some of the classic ones over the last couple of years. Uh, Van Skyver, uh, Ivan Rice, P Patrick Gleason. Uh, Coley Hammer, a uh, couple of different ones that you've even got Jerry Ordway thrown in there. Um, you know, it's always awesome to see some of Ordway's art. But uh, so you've got some of the uh, 
uh, some people here helping out on the final issue. Man, that's huge. Uh, the final issue of John's. I exactly, say. exactly. What else for you this week? What else? I've got Superman number 20. Now, I am not a reader of uh, the Superman title currently, but there is something on this book, the cover of this, that makes me want to pick it up and read it. It has, uh, He's been fighting Hector Hammond, first off, which is not one of his normal foes. That's normally okay. Green Lantern's exactly. foe. But uh, you have Superman decking Orion. Uh, anybody who's been reading Wonder Woman, Orion's been featured in that book for probably about the past five, six issues here. Love his character. He's, he's kind of a, a snarky guy. Uh, there, and I, I don't know what's going on if there's some, I mean, with Hector Hammond involved, there could be some brainwashing going on here, but you have uh, Superman just decking him. So I want, I want to pick this one up and I want to see what's going on there. Uh, you know, anything that's featuring these, uh, the uh, new gods there, I'm, I'm always getting for. Cool. Very cool. What else you got? For me, uh, a couple of months ago, I did an interview with uh, Stephen Mooney for uh, his new book from IDW, Half Past Danger. Exactly. It's a six-issue miniseries. It's a great interview, if I may say so. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed doing it, uh, uh, doing the interview with him. And we finally have the first issue of Half Past Danger coming out. It is fun, action-packed, fast-paced. It reminds me of an Indiana Jones kind of story exactly. there. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be one of those, again, that uh, sound like a broken record. It's going to fly off the shelf. It's that good. So that's that's another for me. I know. It's kind of crazy because we did those May solicitations, and now we're seeing some of these uh, ones hitting the shelves. It's, it's kind of surreal. That's, that's <laughs> like I right. predicted the future or something. <laughs> we'll... we'll uh, <laughs> We're, we're still new to the whole thing there, so so yeah, we're, we're going to become the old pros here eventually. Exactly. And <laughs> yeah. It won't it won't be the same, but yeah, it's it's cool seeing these uh, titles that we first started out saying, hey, check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out, finally coming out here, so we can say, check it out again, <laughs> again, one more time. <laughs> and Randy did do an interview, a great interview with him on the side. I'll include a link below. Uh, he also did, a, from one that came out last week, he did an interview with the writer of Dream Thief, and we still have an issue or two of that on the shelf, so you can pick that up uh, from last week as well. Uh, also, uh, out for, out this week for me, um, we've got uh, Avengers hitting the shelves. We're leading up, Avengers number 12 hitting the shelves. Uh, leading up, we're leading up to the Infinity, Infinity uh, event that's coming up in the next few months. Uh, but this particular issue, I think we're still dealing with uh, Shang Chi, and uh, and the team. No, no, that... no, no. That was a one shot there. That was just a one shot. Yeah, this one is them in the Savage Land. Oh, uh, good the, lord. The group in the Savage Land there. So that was one of the uh, event space uh, places where uh, the pods came down to Earth. So the Savage That's Land's right. been changed, and and so we're focusing back on that group again. Yeah, it's, it, it gets kind of uh, hard to keep track with where uh, Jonathan Hickman's taking us sometimes because uh, we confused, have about yeah. three or four different places yeah. where uh, the, the Avengers are at right now. They've grown the team out to uh, be the best they can be, and uh, they're just, you know, it's kind of hard to keep track sometimes. That's so. why I was so confused. <laughs> I was like, I thought, I thought actually it was a, that was a two-part story. We just got the first part. With issue 11. But. Right, which had the great little ending there with Shang-Chi. Uh, exactly. I love that. But, uh, exactly. Yeah, that guy, was no, <laughs> that guy was no match. It was awesome, man. Yeah. <laughs> smooth. Very smooth. Very smooth. Very cool. What else for you, bro? Um, I, I think it should be worth mentioning we have uh, Trigon, or, or I'm sorry, uh, Teen Titans number 20 coming out, which is going to be one of these um, they've brought Raven into the mix with things and they've uh, brought of course when she's there her father's there Trigon is and so uh, they've had possession of uh, Tim Drake for a while now and woo, there's the music <laughs> and uh, so they they are uh, culminating uh, the the whole story is and we're going to see just who prevails in that is uh trigon going to be successful here or is it going to be 
you know, somehow that the Tim can get control back over his senses and okay. save the day, something like that. But uh, this is, you know, it's just one of those things dealing with a classic Teen Titans uh, villain of theirs and bringing in one of the Teen Titan favorites with uh, Raven there over the past couple of issues. And uh, it's, it's possibly going to be her joining the fold there okay or you know possibly her them giving her her own Teen Titans book as well so there's you know big happenings that are going to be uh, coming out from this another one for me this week is Uncanny X-Men number six uh, hitting the shelves this week I'm digging this series I'm digging I'm digging uh, Bendis uh, writing I'm digging uh, I think Fraser Irving is the yeah, one on Fraser now. Fraser Irving is, yeah. And, uh, he'll be doing some issues with Chris, Chris, Chris. I say Batalo. Batalo. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see to Randy's pronunciation <laughs> of Batalo. Uh, but uh, uh, we're finding them, uh, the team now in limbo. Uh, and I'm looking forward to uh, 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 this. This is the type of setting that uh, Fraser Irving excels in. His right. artwork is perfect for that type of. Uh, that setting, you can tell by the covers and the dark stuff that he's done in the past. Just like, yes, okay, let's yeah, let's see what, let's see what's going on with this. <laughs> Check it out. I th I think of his uh, seven soldiers uh, clarion there, and they, yes. yeah, it just the, it works perfectly with this. Exactly, exactly. So, Uncanny X Men number six will be on the shelves as well this week. This is a series you really should be you should be checking out. Yeah. If you're reading any of the other X-Men stuff, you really should be reading this as well, as far as I'm concerned. So. Right. The all-new X-Men focuses on, on one side of things, and this focuses on the other side of the uh, the whole mutant uh, fiasco, debacle, you know, whatever you want to call it right now, where, you know, the humans and mutants aren't so chummy as they have kind of been in the last couple of years. So, right. Um, it's, I think, just as important a, of a series as um, all new X-Men has been. Yeah, I agree. What's next for you, bro? Last up for me, uh, Young Avengers number five. This book is easily one of my favorites. Sits there on the top of my list to read whenever I get home. And we're going to finally figure out, well, maybe figure out why Loki did what he did uh, here last issue. And uh, that... that I, Solicitations. I, I, I have to repeat what they said there, where they're pretty sure that Miss America is going to punch somebody. She usually does. <laughs> I, I, I love that character. Maybe one of my most favorite characters they've had in the last couple of years that they've uh, brought into the whole Marvel uh, mythos there. Cool. So uh, that and uh, the way that Jamie McKelvey's art just, yes. he, he tells the stories in su from such a unique perspective there that... Uh, it's a treat to read this book. You're not you're not seeing this type of storytelling anywhere else. It's very I love his art. Yeah. So so clean. It reminds me of like a cleaner, newer version, maybe like Kevin McGuire. I Kevin McGuire, I think his facial expressions uh, and faces are similar to McGuire or uh, even Perez with how he does yeah. that. He doesn't put as much detail into the background as Perez does nobody does, no. but yeah, I, I, Kevin McGuire or Perez are the two that I was thinking of uh, yeah. when you were going to spat, when I was waiting to hear who you said. <laughs> and Kevin McGuire is still great even to this day, but awesome. just just a slight comparison there, and that that really wraps it up for us for this week. Yeah, a bunch of new stuff hitting the shelves. Check out the Green Lantern stuff, all you Green Lantern fans. This is going to be your week. We got this oversized anniversary issue that's hitting the shelves. All these number ones from Image, Dark Horse, and, and various others. <clears throat> still got uh, tons of stuff here on the shelf. If, you, if you're still a fan, if you're reading Age of Ultron, we still have issues of those plus AU issues to check out as well. So get in here, uh, pick up some stuff. If you've went and seen Star Trek Into Darkness, we have some stuff at the very front of the store for you right there as you walk in that you can check out that includes the old Star Trek characters plus the new ones. That right. you can pick up, read, and enjoy. Uh, there's even, if I'm not mistaken, there's even like an Into Darkness prelude That's uh, right. issue up there yeah. that you can check out and maybe get a little background of what happens, what happened before Into Darkness. Uh, that's in theaters right now. Right. That's really it. Let me uh, propose something new. The question of the week, since Randy and I talked about it so much earlier, what do you think of Superior Spider-Man? Do you right. think that Peter Parker should have regained? 
control of everything, or are you happy with Doc Ock being Superior Spider-Man now? So tell us what you think tell about us. that in the comments. We want to hear about that. He's Randy. I'm Chris. We are Excalibur Comics, Cars, and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Be sure and visit our site at www.excaliburccg.com. Thanks for press and play. We have surpassed 1,500 That's views, right. trending up to 1,600 views of our videos, and we really appreciate it. Wouldn't be here without you. Anything else to add, Randy? If you walk into the shop, you'll see this face pretty much every single day. I can always help you out. I can always recommend something to you. This is the guy for recommendations. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care.